Massachusetts is the first state in the nation to combine energy and environmental agencies under one cabinet secretary with the shared mission of bringing clean energy technology to market, curbing greenhouse gas emissions, and cutting energy costs. I'm Jenny Johnson for Comcast Newsmakers at the Eastern States Exposition in West Springfield, Massachusetts. And joining me today, the Secretary of the Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs, Rick Sullivan. Welcome, Rick. Well, it's great to be here at the Big E. Thanks for having yeah, me. Yeah, it's a great day. Always a great day at the Big E. Now, you oversee the Commonwealth's six environmental, natural resource, and energy regulatory agencies. So. What is the benefit to combining these agencies for the state? Well, the governor had a real vision um, and was the first governor in the country that combined all these agencies under one secretariat, understanding that good, clean energy decisions are also, at the end, very good environmental decisions and vice versa. So there is a lot of synergy um, in growing the clean energy business because, obviously, uh, it is very good for the environment. Okay, so let's get into a little bit more specifics. What renewable energy projects are contributing to the state, clean energy, et cetera? We certainly have been uh, leaders in the installation of uh, solar energy and we've seen a 30-fold increase in the number of installs uh, in Massachusetts during the governor's term so that by the end of this calendar year we fully expect that there's going to be uh, over 90 megawatts of solar energy installed the same with wind um, there'll be over 90 megawatts of wind which is a 30-fold increase since the governor took office so we are really moving forward and it's because of the frameworks and the legislation and the incentives um, that Governor Patrick and the Massachusetts legislature really put in place uh, beginning in 2007 so as things are moving Moving forward, how are they cutting costs? How are we going to see them cut costs in the future? Well, there's a, there's a real emphasis on energy efficiencies, and I think everybody can uh, really understand that when you think about your energy use uh, and where it comes from and how, how we spend it, um, that we can do things better and more efficiently. Massachusetts spends over $20 billion a year in energy. Of that, $18 billion leaves the Commonwealth and actually leaves the country in terms of investment. So by investing as in what the governor calls our first energy, which is the energy we do not use, uh, we are allowed to bring back that $18, million, uh, 18 billion dollar investment and keep it here locally in Massachusetts in the region. I want to talk about land preservation. $50 million per year goes towards the conservation of land. So specifically, how is that funding used? Um, it's, a, it's from the capital account and Governor Patrick and Lieutenant Governor Mur Murray made an unprecedented commitment to land conservation. Uh, and it goes to um, you know buying land uh, in fee in terms of ownership, but it also involves conservation restrictions. It involves buying work working lands such as farms, which we're obviously celebrating uh, a great uh, detail here today uh, at the Big E, as well as uh, open space and uh, for habitat protection for wildlife. So um, it is really um, buying land, understanding that part of the quality of life that uh, we enjoy in Massachusetts and all our cities and towns is, is open space. Um, and you know, we have the ninth largest park system in the country, wow. a little state, but the ninth biggest system. And that's because um, of the values of the people of Massachusetts. We really do respect our environment and our open space. So important to conserve it all. Now recently there's been some devastation due to tornado and flooding. So what are the environmental issues connected to this and how's the state's response been so far? Well we have really focused on on two fronts. Um, you know certainly having toured and being from western Massachusetts uh, you know know the cities and towns where the impacts have been the greatest uh, pretty well. So we have really tried to come in and provide um, some some part of the solution in terms of saw crews and things in terms of cleanup through uh, the Department of Conservation and Recreation. We have worked very closely with the local conservation commissions in terms of uh, protecting water quality in particular um, as the runoffs and the debris has you know found its way into rivers and streams in the Commonwealth um, and on the energy side we really put together some uh, some big initiatives um, investing in making nine million dollars available to the communities impacted by the tornadoes so that when they rebuild their homes or they rebuild their business they think about their energy use um, and make that available so that they do it most efficiently uh, in some cases um, doing it with zero energy at all um, so that uh, nobody wanted um, you know certainly nobody wanted to see the tornado come through but it is an opportunity to come out being better smarter and more efficient as we think about our energy use not sure if this is possible but in about 20 seconds what would you say is sort of your strongest vision for this coming term next few years again it's my job now as a secretary the governor put in a great um, set of frameworks to uh, have energy we need to have that conversation across the Commonwealth city by city and town by town well Rick thank you so much <laughs> and thanks for watching Comcast Newsmaker I'm Jenny Johnson.